Welcome back. Very few subjects spark as much emotional discourse as abortion. It is a deeply divisive subject with very little middle ground. Some see it as a sacred matter of life and death for an unborn person. To others, it is about the sacred right of a woman to determine what happens to her own body. And still others believe it is a subject so intensely personal that society shouldn't impose one view or another. Stephanie Gray believes abortion, as we practice it in this country, is tantamount to genocide. She's executive director of the Canadian Centre for Bioethical Reform, and she is joining us tonight in Halifax as she tours Maritime University campuses. Ms. Gray, good evening to you. Good evening. Tell me uh, a bit about uh, your centre, the Canadian Centre for Bioethical Reform. What else do you stand for? Uh, well, we focus primarily on abortion and uh, take the position that an act which kills an unborn human being would be wrong. And our vision is to make abortion unthinkable. So we work from an educational perspective right. to equip uh, people with the reality of who the unborn child is and what abortion does to that unborn child. You wish to make abortion seem unthinkable. Do you wish to make abortion illegal? From, right, from the organization's perspective, we don't work politically, so we just work from an unthinkable perspective. And yet you do characterize it in what would be considered a criminal terms. What, what do you believe the law of the country should say about abortion? Right. Uh, well, most certainly anyone who believes the unborn are human and abortion kills those humans would want it to be against the law uh, in the sense that just as we aren't allowed to kill two-year-olds and five-year-olds uh, legally, neither should we be allowed to kill the unborn. But before we get to a point where we would see a change in public policy, we first need to shift public opinion, which is why we focus there. Uh, you will be aware, of course, that the courts consistently give primacy to uh, the rights of the woman over the rights of the unborn. What would be your legal case, if you will, for reversing that? Right. Well, basically, the, the right that we have to life uh, should apply to the unborn. And the reason that right to life isn't considered to apply to the unborn is because the unborn aren't considered persons. And uh, if you look in history, when genocide and other injustices have occurred, it's because the victims are denied personhood status. And so just as it was wrong in history to kill mass numbers of human beings on the basis that they're not persons, we would argue uh, today with abortion, it's wrong to kill the unborn uh, on the basis that some say they're not persons because the reality is they're human beings that's known scientifically and therefore that means they're persons. And, and what again would be your, your legal argument for giving primacy to the rights of the unborn person over the rights of the well, fully the, developed and born person? The legal argument would be the right to life that we have uh, the right to life and the right to liberty and our freedoms to do whatever we want stop mm -hmm. when what we're going to do harms another human being. So in other words if a woman is going to do something to harm her unborn born child, namely abortion, then that shouldn't be allowed. Uh, we of course are in a country where we have as our supreme law a charter of rights. Uh, children in our country have, have rights to protection and their parents have legal obligations to protect their children. So what would you see as society's obligations to the women who do not wish to assume the responsibility of raising children, which in some cases they will say they do not want. Right, we would encourage uh, adoption. Uh, there are many couples in Canada that are on long waiting lists to adopt children uh, because there aren't children to adopt because one in four babies' lives ends in abortion in this country. Mm -hmm. So we would encourage that, uh, as well as encourage uh, money to go from, crisis, uh, from abortion clinics into places like crisis pregnancy centers where such centers offer alternatives to abortion by helping women through their pregnancy, giving them parenting classes and other resources they need to parent their child if they choose parenting instead of adoption. What would be your view uh, as to what should happen to uh, women who have abortions in Canada? Once we come to a point where abortion is against the law, it would be because the unborn are considered human. And therefore, any consequences we would have for individuals who kill born children uh, would be the same for individuals that kill their unborn children. Uh, and even with each individual crime, each consequence might vary based on circumstances, intent, motivation, everything like that. Mm -hmm. So at the most basic level, we would just say, treat the unborn the same way we treat born children. So is, is a, is a pre-born uh, life form exactly the same, exactly equal in your view from from the moment of conception until the second before the child is delivered? Right. The only difference from fertilization onwards is the unborn get bigger, they get more developed, and they become increasingly independent. And since all of us were five, we have gotten bigger, become more developed, and increasingly independent. So at fertilization, each one of our genotype or genetic identity came into existence. Yes. We know that we were living, having human parents, we know we have to be human offspring. So there's no nature change to that being from fertilization onwards 
it's just a, an appearance change or an ability change, and that's really no different from our appearance change or ability change since all of us were born. How do you explain or, or rationalize spontaneous abortion by the body? Right, well spontaneous abortion, uh, otherwise called miscarriage, is where something goes wrong biologically which uh, prevents the woman from maintaining the pregnancy. It's uh, in the same way that things happen naturally with regards to heart attacks. Uh, some things happen naturally, but just because they happen naturally, it doesn't mean we can do it purposefully. So if you're going to have a heart attack, that doesn't give me the right to stab you in the heart. And if someone is going to have a miscarriage, that doesn't give us the right to, uh, in other cases, pr uh, purposefully cause the death of an unborn child. This, as you know, seems to be a debate that uh, is destined to go on for a very long time. It's mm -hmm. gone on for a long time already. Neither side seems likely to convince uh, the other. I wonder at what point uh, do we say that there's not a lot of of need or point in practically debating it anymore? Well, I think uh, the, the, it isn't decided. There are two sides that are very strong in their views, uh, my side being one of them, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of people who actually fit in the middle, and they're the ones that you, I would argue are moderately pro-choice. They may say it's sometimes right or sometimes wrong. Those are the people our organization is trying to reach, the yep. people who don't have a firm position. Show them the truth, and we believe they'll take a firm position in the side of protecting the weak and vulnerable unborn child. How likely is it that this government, the conservative government, will consider uh, criminalizing abortion? Uh, well, with what we've seen recently and in the election uh, and the discussion going on in the election, I don't foresee a change in the near future. Stephanie Gray, we're very uh, glad to have a few minutes of your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie Gray with the Canadian Centre for Bioethical uh, Reform. And we understand, of course, that uh, Ms. Gray's views represent one side in a very uh, hotly contested uh, subject. And on some other evening, we will hear from someone on the other side of this. Still ahead on CTV News, keeping your teenager safe behind the wheel.